thank you, Tracy, for that. So I would like to introduce our guest speaker. And it is an honor, everybody, to introduce our guest speaker, Rangel Aruga, who has a master's in public health and works for the SAPSI Prevention Services as a health program analyst. He also leads the SAPSI Metro LA County campaign efforts right now. And Tony has been part of the Met uh, work in the county for years. So we have a really good expert to be with us today. Please ask all the questions after his presentation. And today, Rangel will share up to date information about the effects of meth, who's affected, the importance of awareness and messaging dealing with men, and hopefully at, uh, how to get help. So we want to open, okay, the line for further discussion and questions and interaction after his presentation. So welcome, Rangel. And everybody, let's give Rangel a hand. Welcome. You can freely do your presentation now, Rangel. Thank you. Thank you, Richard, for that introduction. Um, as Richard shared, I'd like to. Um, so, my presentation, I'm guessing, will be about 30 minutes, but I'd like to welcome some conversation afterwards around this topic, as I know it's it's very pertinent to all the a lot of the work we do. And for those of you who are in the community, it's probably pertinent to um, to just your community and, and how it affects um, you know what goes on in in your in your neighborhood. So um, let me start by sharing my screen. Do you guys see the screen? All right, awesome. So we're going to talk about some of the meth prevention initiatives that the county is working on. Again, it's just you know meth has been an epidemic. Um, that's been going on for, for years now. And I think it, it warrants us taking and having a response on it. So hopefully what I can do today is kind of discuss um, what, um, what the county is doing. So I'm actually having trouble changing screens. Let's see, All right, perfect, there it goes, sorry. I am so used to Teams now, I forgot how to change the screen. But so what we're going to talk about today is, is just we'll, we'll talk a little bit about methamphetamine by the numbers. Some of you may be aware, but again, some of you may not. Of why, why we got to this point, um, you know, back in the early 2000s, meth had become an issue and then it reared its ugly head again here in in the last, uh, you know, few five or, or few, uh, years. But it's it's been a long time coming. So we'll, we'll take a look at the numbers and, and hopefully that'll be enlightening to some and, you know, kind of give you a background as to why we're, we are where we are. And then we'll talk about some of the meth prevention initiatives that we're working on, um, the meth task force, specifically the meth prevention committee. Um, again, because I want to focus on the prevention efforts that we're doing here in the county. And then I'll go into the media campaign planning process, talk about the two different campaigns that we've um, done. For those of you who are provide, part of the provider network, I know you've seen some of the um, kind of the social media that we've asked you to share and some of maybe the other creative, but we can get into more depth and then Again, I hope this is an opportunity. We don't have a, you know, it's a, it's a big group, but maybe, you know, we'll have an opportunity to kind of discuss and, and give an opportunity for others to exchange ideas. Um, so let's just kind of set the, the table. Why, why is meth become an issue here in LA County? Um, if you look at the numbers from 2008, um, looking at hospitalizations and ED visits, they've increased at alarming rates. Um, I know some of you have seen the slide before, but it nevertheless, states the uh, the major issue of meth in LA County. Hospitalizations increased by 290%. Uh, emergency department visits increased by 604%. Uh, these are ED visits and hospitalizations that include meth dependence, abuse, use or poison and diagnosis uh, or external injury. Um, so even beyond just meth um, ED visits and hospitalizations, the number of deaths have also increased by drastic numbers. You look at how Small they were back in 2008, they were only around uh, 40. Um, so the number of de meths, deaths related to meth has increased by 707%. Again, we need to update the slide because I know we're now in 2021. 
um, but it continues to increase. Uh, the proportion of deaths in relative to other substances has also increased by 522%. So it's just, you know, in, for most of the country, you know, it's the opioid epidemic, but here in LA County, uh, it's more of a meth epidemic. So we need to focus a lot of our energies into addressing that issue. So here's another very telling statistic. Meth is involved in more deaths in LA County than any other drug, looking at 2010 to 2018. If you look at the green curve, um, you look at the number of deaths back in, in 2010, it's around uh, 400 cases where meth is involved. These are toxicology reports. So when you look in the deceased, it's not necessarily the primary cause of death, but if there was a car accident or something, they found meth in the body. So back in 2010, it was 400. 2018, we're approaching 1,200. So, you know, what's the natural question to ask next is, is meth um, getting better with the pandemic? Maybe we're not, you know, getting out as much. So, um, you know, there's maybe there's not as much access. But in fact, if you look at the line below, uh, the pandemic has actually exacerbated the epidemic. Um, so in 2020, there were almost 1,400 deaths attributable to meth overdose alone. So again, I want to stress the weight of that statistic because that's just on overdose alone. Um, that doesn't even include, you know, somebody who got in a car accident or something who had meth in their body that may have, you know, may have contributed to it. Uh, but may have not. So, you know, the number of deaths, if you looked at that graph, it will even be beyond the, four, the 1,300 or the 1,389 deaths that would be next on 2020. So just, just want to set the table on some of the statistics. And the next one against the green curve, but whether um, the availability is actually um, fueling the epidemic or just meeting the demand of the epidemic, the amount of seizures of the substance meth has increased again also dramatically. If you look at 2009, it was 16% of all substances. Um, and now when you go to 2018, it is approaching 50%. Um, so according to all reports by um, the National Forensic Laboratory Information System, which is a law enforcement's uh, database. So um, on top of that, in the last, uh, like in a five year span, the price of meth has gone down by 31%. It all makes sense, but you also wanna think about does that you know, is that fueling the epidemic because of, you know, the price or the cost of meth? Um, so we'll go into a first initiative. Uh, we are uh, going to talk about the Meth Task Force, Meth Prevention Committee. Um, some of you, I've seen some names on, up there, so I'm glad you're here and, and are, you're a part of that effort. Um, but I'll talk about, first, the Meth Task Force. What, what is that? Um, so they convened back in the end of December. Um, this was to address and make sure that there's a coordinated effort between both um, treatment, prevention, harm reduction, um, in terms of responding to the meth epidemic. And we're bringing all stakeholders, all parties um, from private, public, um, and, and also um, from nonprofit or government. Uh, we all want a kind of a unified e effort to address um, the meth epidemic again. We want a coordinated effort. So the Meth Prevention Committee, which I helped lead, um, um, the, is a prevention arm of, of the Meth Task Force. Again, we want to do the same thing, make sure that there's a coordinated effort uh, around um, what we are doing here at the county. Um, in addition, we want, there, we want it to serve kind of as a forum uh, for people to have an opportunity to share what, what you're working on. Um, we, we have the Safe West Hollywood uh, a coalition working on it. We also include um, the, um, the Wall of uh, Los Memorias uh, Act Now Against Meth. Coalition, again, we want to make sure we have a coordinated effort so that we have synergy when we, you know, when we address this epidemic. It is, you know, it has, it's multifaceted, the issues driving, you know, the issue here in, in the county. So we want to make sure we have um, the most intelligent and most coordinated effort possible. So what have we done? Again, we're still in the nascent phases of the Meth Prevention Committee. Um, our, our first meeting was back in January, again, to which some of you are part of. Um, we had we, we've already completed our goals and objectives. Um, goal number one, or our major goal was around overdose, um, the, decreasing the number of overdose deaths by 20% in five years. So that's, again, it's a, it's a major impetus of why we started, uh, we met in the first place uh, was because of that, uh, the overdose deaths. So then after that, the committee um, put together a number of different objectives, uh, which we categorized, prioritized, and we refined. And then we put it into uh, four different uh, priorities, uh, including um, engagement, outreach, um, that's number one, education, uh, harm reduction, and goals, and I'm um, sorry, uh, and evaluation and data evaluation. So those are our goals and objectives. 
Next, we want to also look into our landscape analysis. There's still a lot we don't know about meth. It's, it's, it's mysterious in a lot of ways. We know like some of the primary risk groups, but we want to do a deeper dive into the data. So, you know, are we missing any risk groups? Why is there a big initiation into, why, why are we increased, why is there this increase in meth again? Um, why is it rearing its ugly head again? Um, are there, you know, where was the face, first place of use? Where's the last place of use? So these are questions we all want to answer. Um, it, we first have to take a look at ex existing data. Uh, next, we have already actually just completed our prevention resource inventory. And then for those who don't know, and didn't, um, that what that is, is we are trying to take stock of all the meth prevention efforts in LA County. So we did a survey, we asked all the SED prevention providers that we could, um, there were dozens, so we did have a, a pretty good response. Um, then we took stock of the who, what, where, and why around, or how around meth prevention efforts. So again, that was gonna serve as our baseline as to what, what services do we have um, kind of at the ground level. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Uh, next, we're gonna do the community needs assessment, which will, um, if you, some of you have been there for the past few years, again, I'm speaking to the providers. We did one on marijuana a few years ago and um, prescription drugs. We're gonna do one on um, meth, uh, either at end to end this year or beginning of next year. And it's gonna go out in the community. We're gonna ask questions about knowledges, ad, um, attitudes, behaviors. And um, again, that's gonna serve kind of as our baseline. We're also uh, of, of, you know, of what uh, people you know, are feeling at this moment around meth, get that information with the landscape analysis, with the data, with the resource inventory, then kind of conduct a gap analysis. Are there anything that are not missing between what we, we saw in the, in the community's assessment or the resource inventory? Is there some sort of disconnect? And then again, that's going to serve as a research a res um, starting point. And then in five years or in, in subsequent years, you can take a look and see if there are, you know, if with all of our prevention efforts, is are there changes? Are there improvements? So uh, this is really important, a really important starting point. Again, we're in the nascent phases of this effort. Um, we started only in, in January of this year. Um, so I think the majority of the rest of the talk will be about the meth campaign. Um, but you know, if you're interested in the meth prevention committee, I know some of you are there, just go ahead and contact me. Um, it's, you know, it's open. If you feel like you're doing prevention work uh, around meth and would like to participate, again, please let me know. Um, so onto the media campaign plan, uh, media campaign effort. We started that actually, it's been going on three years now. So we started the whole planning back in 2019. And how the whole process started was we started with formative research, uh, which was a, a review of a county level meth data to identify at risk groups, um, uh, demographics, age, race, gender, who are most at risk. And then we did a comparative analysis of other meth, meth campaigns all throughout uh, the country, other jurisdictions. What did they do? Then we took, we did um, listening sessions with stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders involved a lot of uh, the folks that, you know, they might even be part of this participating right now um, in, this, um, in, this, in this webinar. Um, and then we went to establish campaign goals, got information from the listening sessions with the stakeholders, prevention treatment providers, also with our county providers. And then on top of that, again, there's, there's multiple steps involved. Uh, we started creative development. First, there was a phase where we did exploratory uh, focus groups. Uh, we had early creative, where we took some preliminary um, concepts, also included concepts, both, both strong and weak, from other campaigns. And we included it and tested it in front of focus groups, who, were, uh, who included at-risk individuals. From there, we took it, um, took it to leadership, refined it. Um, and then we began and presented it to um, a second set of uh, another focus group, which are known as creative focus groups. Uh, we we did we did the storyboards presented to them had multiple concepts that we thought were the best and then from there we got another winning concept of of you know what we thought was best to present then we went to the leadership and then we started we finally started doing um, recruiting actors and then we started doing our auditions and then we started doing the filming so it was a long process but just to do a quick rewind um, take a look at some of the information that's been there before I think it's important to take a look at you know the comparative analysis you know the comparative analysis of all the different jurisdictions of what they did and what we saw was that national campaigns were exclusively about prevention and overtly stated their objectives were to stigmatize use and demonize and dehumanize users you can see from these imagery from our formative research this just wasn't effective and this has been supported by you know like by decades of research that you know, it's this type of messaging that doesn't work. 
Um, it's you know, the fear mongering, the, the scare tactics don't necessarily work. Um, people are, um, and also we don't want to demonize those the, the people are using. We want we want to also help people who are also addicted or are dependent on meth. So back to the key research findings. Um, many reasons people use meth. Uh, it's for recreational reasons. Um, they are you know they want to they do it when they're partying or they're doing when they're going out to enhance something of fun that they want to do. Others do it to get it all done. Uh, people are working multiple jobs. They're you know they're, they're working as rideshare drivers working in, you know, in, you know, cash only type of positions, blue collar jobs, multiple jobs, um, also for the stresses of homelessness. So it's a survival mechanism. People are need to stay awake to protect themselves, to protect their possessions, uh, and also for sex work during incarceration. And because of mental health issues, uh, people also use it to, uh, to lose weight. Again, that's, you know, maybe body dysmorphia. So there's many reasons for why people are using meth. Um, so what we needed to do is provide emotionally and intellectually provocative ads uh, that are impactful to a wide audience, um, meaning there's a lot of competition for ad space uh, when you, you go on a line or you're, you have face screen time. So we needed to find something that will grab people's attention. We also wanted it to be, make it relatable. Like um, if people find it relatable, it's emotionally responsive to them, then they're going to pay more attention. So that's something we wanted to kind of keep in mind um, when we created Created these ads, and also the fact that you know the uh, stressing what you might possibly lose. That's also very effective in terms of having somebody paying attention. So if you hear like if something you see is very positive, but then you know you're thinking that this might be something I possibly lose. That's going to be a major deterrent for for trying a substance or trying something negative. Um, and the next, creating realistic consequences of using. So, you know, audiences have gotten smarter. I don't want to speak to past generations, but, you know, the, it, it's just people, if you exaggerate, people are going to get, you, you know, we don't want to insult the intelligence of the audience. So show realistic consequences. Don't show great worst case scenarios, even scenarios where it's possible. But if you stress that, you know, people say that that's not me. That's, you know, I'm not even close to being that. I'm okay. I can use, I can continue to use substances. So um, just showing something realistic in terms of the consequences of use is, a, is also important. And then again, avoiding stigmatization of people who are using the substance again. There's no reason to demonize. I don't think, um, you know, the, the folks that are already suffering, um, I don't think that helps with that messaging. And, and it just ends and, and turns off people, tune people out when it's too negative. So overall strategy, be hard hitting and hopeful. So um, our campaign goals, is, this is what we came up with, is to create a sense of urgency around meth use in LA County. Um, again. This is, you know, it's important, it's epidemic. Not everybody knows because meth not necessarily might not be in your face, but it is becoming more and more so. So we wanted to stress that sense of urgency. And also we want to speak to a broad audience. Um, this, we want to speak to just wherever anybody is in terms of where you're using uh, of the, regarding the, uh, the dangers of meth through messaging uh, through the full spectrum of users, whether you're you know, somebody who's never used, somebody who's dabbling, somebody who's uh, dependent or somebody who's already addicted. You want to speak to the audience in, at all areas, again, on the spectrum. Um, and then finally, we want to motivate those struggling with addiction to seek treatment. Again, we looked at the other jurisdictions. This is not something they did. They didn't show messaging around offering treatment to those who are, are suffering from addiction from that. So our key, key target audience next is what we determined, um, and that's LA County residents who are at higher risk for trying meth or who currently use meth recreationally or routinely. So how do you operationalize that? We looked at higher risk zip codes. <laughs> areas, high risk zip codes include high number of ED visits, um, hospitalizations, and deaths. So we saw the stats earlier, but we just took the zip codes and, and you know, we made it uh, applicable to when we did our advertising. Um, so, um, and also we wanted to target people who work specific job categories, blue collar, um, experiencing recent homelessness or prolonged unemployment, or our MSM or men who have sex with men are again, a key target audience. So we'll start talking about Meth Free uh, Los Angeles County 2020. This is, uh, this one actually launched back in February 24th. So right at the onset of the pandemic. So they were concurrent when we did our um, press event. There were, there was, they were trying to take over the press and ask more questions because um, Dr. Fair was there. They're asking a lot of questions around COVID. Um, but we tried to uh, recommendeer the conversation around meth.
but yeah, it was just, they just happened at the, uh, you know, kind of at that, that same juncture. So um, the call to action was don't let meth take our city or our dreams. And then why was it that? It's because don't, um, those who had like civic pride or, um, you know, pride in their community, um, that was often a major deterrent to trying meth in the first place. And also uh, the fact that if they saw the blight that meth had caused in their community, they, that was also something that was emphasized as to not what we want to uh, necessarily um, use. Or, you know, in terms of dreams, again, we wanted to positively enforce. Um, sorry, I'm getting some messages from my boss. Um, so, and or our dreams. So that's um, a kind of a, what people, if people often saw like somebody going in a positive trajectory in their lives, and when they saw it being affected by meth, that was a deterrent. And then again, when people were um, wanting, you know, saw what they could potentially lose, that was another, again, major deterrent, as we stated before. So that's where, that was kind of our major call to action, um, to go to the website and don't let meth take our city or our dreams. And then again, the targeting strategies we had mentioned in the, in the message on uh, the slide prior. Um, here was an alternative message, um, chemicals that make meth. Again, we wanted another thing when we looked at the focus groups, if sometimes people just tried it just to say, oh, it's meth, it's another substance. They didn't really understand what was in it. Um, this was, you know, it's very synthetic, very artificial, very unappealing. Um, I think this was effective for like the very preventative um, um, community who never had tried uh, meth, but might consider dabbling. Okay. And here's our treatment message. You can come back from meth. Again, this is unique to our campaign that we never saw in other uh, efforts, um, support, expertise, love. And we lastly, we actually in uh, included courage because that was really important um, descriptive when you're trying to come back from meth because we know it's not easy. There isn't a mat. There isn't a medically assisted treatment for you to, uh, to, to um, help assist you in, in getting over a meth addiction. Um, so in terms of like the overall media, we took a 360 degree approach. Uh, we partnered with our um, media vendor, Fraser, Fraser Communications. We took uh, multiple approaches to best um, reach our age group, 18 to 35 target group. Um, again, that was 18 to 35 because um, that was the age of initiation. Uh, it was around, it was like the early twenties. So that was kind of our group, but we also made sure that the messaging reached people as much as 54 because that's the major group of um, like it was like 26 to 54 that were in treatment so that was also a group that we needed to focus on multiple media we had radio English and Spanish like all the different radio stations uh, K-Rock um, Amp Radio um, Kiss um, uh, you name it power that we worked with we utilize on-air personalities they were very I'm happy to push the message uh, traditional streaming, so we also had Pandora uh, streaming TV, um, programmatic display, programmatic video, and that's what that is, is just um, using programs to kind of do the best bids, and then that's the type of images you would see, or like advertising you'd see, like pop-ups, or like the banners if you are like browsing. Um, also so social media, that's Facebook, um, Facebook and Instagram, Google search, out of home, I'll say with out of home though we were kind of affected. We did they were out there in terms of bulletins, billboards, bus tails, and so forth. Uh, but we also had a place based strategy where we wanted to go to bars and, and clubs and put the, the kind of the um, mirror cleans um, in terms of all the different um, substances that are in meth or artificial substances. Um, but that was uh, we were not allowed because of the safer at home order, so we were unable to do that. And um, and our outreach was limited. But uh, for those curious, um, the website again methfreelacounty.org. Um, no Cristal Condado, LA.org was a Spanish website. So here are some of the creative concepts, uh, the different billboards, both in English and Spanish, different views. Um, I saw these remain for many, many months after the campaign. So that was pretty, that was pretty good that we were able to get added value. Um, here's some of the, again, the um, treatment messaging, both again in English and Spanish. And here they are actually in the real world. Um, here's some billboards throughout LA County. Um, maybe you've seen them before. Some are off the 710, some are off major freeways. Again, this is from 2020. Um, here's the poster city lights. These are a little bit smaller, but they were out and around. Um, 
convenience stores and gas stations. There's a lot of different smaller posters. Um, here they are as um, our bus shelters. Um, and then here are bus tails also included. And in case you haven't seen this, I will play the treatment uh, video first. This was pre-COVID, as you can tell, because all the actors are in embracing and very close to each other. Um, but let me, let me skip. Okay, so that was our treatment message. Um, it was actually very effective. We had a lot of clicks on this because uh, there was an interest for it. Again, and there's not, there's never been really major, major advertising uh, on treat. So, um, and this was our prevention message. It was spoken word. It speaks, it's, I'll, I'll let it play, but it speaks to like everybody. It's a very general message because, um, well, almost everybody just with the hustle and bustle, you're missing out. It, it just, I think it spoke to uh, a lot of different people. So I'll just let it play. So again, we're stressing on the dreams um, uh, that it, this is important and a major deterrent, just looking at you know something you potentially could lose. Um, but again, it's you know, we want to keep a positive message. I'll also play the Spanish because I think it's a little it's slightly different. And John, um, they're they're having a hard time hearing the video. Oh. The, the the audio is not playing clearly. Is it is it just like stuttering? Is it yeah, it, and it sounds muffled. It sounds a little oh, muffled. That's too bad. Um, I don't, I know what to do with teams, but I don't know what else to do because it sounds very clear on my end. Should I turn it up or um, you when you go to share screen, there's a, a button that says optimize for sound. So try that. There should be a little uh, box okay. that you can click uh, that you could check. I don't see. So it's under advanced sharing options. Yeah. When you're, when you're sharing your screen on the bottom, there should be a little box that says optimize for sound at towards the bottom of your share screen. Let's see. I do not see it. Optimize for a video clip. Okay, Let, let's try. Yeah, okay. try that. Okay. Let me know how it goes. Fama, fortuna, familia, futuros. Tus sueños y oportunidades están aquí en LA. Es tu camino. Ya casi lo logras. Varios trabajos, turnos, nocturnos, lo que sea. Una fiesta, una promesa y no podías decir no. Tomaste un dosis. Estás metido, estás cansado y agitado. Estás cayendo y fallando. Veniste aquí para triunfar. Estás loco y temblando. Saquemos el cristal de LA. Nuestros sueños valen la pena. Was that better? Yes. Much better. Much can, you, better. can you replay the other two, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Fine. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, my phone too, but now fame, fortune, bright yeah. light, stars in your eyes, family, future, your goals, dreams, and opportunities. They're here in LA, working it almost there, sort of side gigs, night shifts, hustling too hard. A bill, a party, a chance you couldn't risk to miss. You took a hit. You can't wake up, you never sleep. You're in too deep. You're hustling and flailing, you're falling and failing. You came here to make it, you're crazy and shaking. Don't make meth an LA thing. Our dreams are worth saving. Perfect. Did, did I have to optimize for sound every time or is it already? Yeah, it no, it, it should be good. Great. Oh, awesome. Thank you. All right, I'll play the other one now. Quitting meth is hard. It might be the hardest thing you'll ever do. It takes... Oops. Oops. 
courage. It takes support. And it takes a lot of love. But it can be done. Your LA County Department of Public Health has the support, the services, and the expertise to help you come back from meth. Okay, sorry about that. I was trying to check the chat box, but don't, I don't think it'll allow me. All right. That's really it's difficult to leave methamphetamine. All right, sorry. I think uh, forward it through. So just in terms of performance highlights, sort of the metrics. Um, sorry, is everybody still there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I can't see the screen. I can't see anybody's face anymore. Um, the for the uninitiated, what impressions means um, is just eyes or ears that you that have seen the can the campaign. So we have about two almost two hundred impressions. Um, it was quite high for only a campaign that lasted about uh, a little over two months. Uh, we had two almost two and a half million uh, video digital video completions. And then 95,887 website page views. So that's one of the call to action was once people see those videos or, you know, was to click on the link. So we had actually almost 100,000 views for people looking for information. Um, so that was significant. Uh, we also had display banners, which delivered a um, click through rate of over 88% over benchmark. Again, that's very positive, very, you know, much better than um, what would be expected. And then just this dollar amount of pure over delivery. Uh, what that means is because of the because of COVID, we did have some additional opportunities because of our partnerships. We were allowed to get um, more and better advertising. So um, some final campaign uh, recommendations and findings. Again, you can come back from math. Again, it, it, that was a unique um, creative. It, it delivered the most interesting clicks because uh, I guess you know people are interested and maybe this is not something they'd seen before. So we found that very effective. And then it validated also the compassionate message that was given versus the stigmatizing messages in other campaigns. Also high click-through rate for videos and for uh, reinforce that um, showing audience uh, were highly receptive to messages and motivated to learn more. Um, also we have uh, also the high click-through rate for Spanish speaking audiences is something that we should also pay attention to uh, that this is an audience that we need to reach out to and maybe uh, devote more resources to. Um, in terms of valuation, uh, there was a pre and post campaign, um, about 2,000 pre, 2,000 posts that measured, again, baseline knowledge, attitudes, self-reported behavior. Uh, the post campaign also take a look at um, a major thing of the post campaign, uh, again, uh, the 2,000 or so people, it compared people who were aware of the campaign and people who were unaware of the campaign uh, in terms of like maybe the positive outcomes that may come from people who are actually aware of the campaign. So campaign awareness was 25%. Again, that was really high, um, considering like there's a lot of different, we are inundated with different messaging um, every day. So the fact that 25% were aware, that was important. Um, they were received positively, whether they had never used math or used math. Uh, so we have a 64%, also 60, large majority were aware of the SASH number, which is a substance abuse uh, service helpline. Uh, that is the number 844-804-7500. Um, and those among those who use meth in the past 30 days, they actually that uh, it may have changed like an attitude or, you know, we don't know if it actually changed the behavior, but um, they were considering reducing their meth use by 66% or considering quitting altogether, which was at 56%. So there's very few evaluation studies on meth currently, but based on the findings, our um, research and or a researcher that, uh, that helped um, do the research and valuation for this campaign was so thought the findings were so compelling that they are uh, we are currently working on a paper to publish them again because there are not a lot of evaluation studies on that so that will be very an important contribution to um, to scientific literature um, summary of findings so this is what I was talking about with bearing aware to unaware so some of the where were 13 times greater in terms of kind of a positive. Um, compared to those who are unaware of the campaign and the following, uh, including being concerned about meth use in the community, talking with others about the risk or dangers of meth, looking online for prevention or treatment information, being aware of helplines or addiction treatment, particularly SASH, also calling the SASH helpline. And then among those who use meth, using meth fewer days in the past month was something, um, was an important outcome or considering quitting meth in the next 30 days. 
uh, was also an important kind of finding uh, when we looked at the post eval. Uh, so some final recommendations. We use this, these findings here to help inform our second campaign that I'll be talking about uh, briefly. Um, COVID-19, again, affected some of the overall performance. I think it actually helped digitally, but our, our kind of um, uh, boots on the ground um, type of efforts were, were affected. Um, zip code targeting ads was very effective. Um, again, having targeting based on you know, ED visits, hospitalizations, and so forth uh, related to meth. We'll look into YouTube again. Again, I'll, I won't discuss that too much. And then utilizing um, Tinder and Grider to reach LGBTQ populations was important as well. All right. So I, this won't. This part won't be as long. But what we're currently working on is Meth Free LA County 2021. Again, if you are part of the network, um, you'll see some of the ads that want to help us kind of push the um, campaign. Um, so our campaign focus is slightly different. Um, the other one was more general messaging, more treatment. This one focuses on three major populations or just kind of strategies that you can kind of say. One is agents of change, and that are, that are friends, families, or other um, allies of somebody who uh, might be suffering from meth, um, that you can help just kind of learn more information, maybe even go to the website and learn more about how you can assist that person. So it's proactive. It's an, it's an ask that, um, you know, it's a call to action that's very active. Um, the next one is uh, harm reduction messaging. We want to focus more on the populations that are unable to quit, but still, you know, but we can still help them use safer uh, or less. And then uh, prevention messaging. This messaging is directly targeted messaging. So this is messaging that speaks, speaks specifically to the populations who might be using. And I'll give you an example of each in, in, in just short, few short minutes. So the media flight is from July through November. Uh, the campaign launch was July 18th. And the press event was July 23rd, some of you which are had participated in. We had our own very own director, uh, Dr. Gary Sai, and our um, TPH director, um, Dr. Barbara Fair, speak at that event. So it, that was very, it was a very strong showing. And we did hand out, if you see on the right, it's very um, uh, well done infographic that we, we had a lot of requests for. So, I'll start off by just showing our first, we don't have all the analytics quite yet because we're still in the middle of the campaign, but I wanna show the first one. This is our Agents of Change um, flagship video. And it, it speaks to um, trying to let somebody who might not know a lot about meth, but thinks that somebody might be using meth, kind of look for signs that are not you know, so obvious. And it also is a message that destigmatizes. So let me, let me play and let me know if it, you cannot hear it. If you think this is what all meth users look like, you're wrong. Long before you can see any physical effects, meth is destroying a new user's brain. So what you should be looking for are signs like paranoia, aggression, and hallucinations. You have to look past the stereotype. Because a loved one struggling with meth in your life could look just like me. And me. And me. There is hope and help at methfreelacounty.org. So this was our first video, and it actually, um, that started right in July. We launched with the um, Agents of Change um, kind of messaging. It's out in the community already, in billboards. Um, we've already had it in social media, and there was a lot of positive feedback, people telling, sharing their stories of recovery, um, and we've you know got a lot of positive response. Um, and that was the first few months. Just a few weeks ago, about two or three weeks ago, we launched our harm reduction campaign. Um, so that this is an example. What we did was stress city and landscapes uh, with positive messaging, where we are actually placing the ads so somebody can kind of relate with. But we also have that um, encouraging messaging to turn the page on meth, whether it be to seek treatment or to seek you know safer alternatives to, to meth use. Uh, so this is an example of a bench um, uh, creative. This is what you would find on a bus shelter, both in English and Spanish no matter your story, we want to help you find your ending to meth addiction. You can provide tools to protect yourself from overdose, education on ways to reduce harm, and even free and low-cost treatment plans. Um, this one, again, this one's based in Venice, hence the palm trees and the boardwalk. Uh, this is a billboard. And then this is a postcard that we want to distribute, and we are hoping to give out to our prevention providers and those um, engagement overdose uh, prevention sites. So on the, on the front of the postcard is a um, 
QR code where you can scan and it'll take you directly, not only to the website that you see, methfreealicana.org, but also to the, it will take you directly to the harm reduction site where you can get more information if you are um, using. Um, and here's the back, it gives you tips. Again, we want to focus, again, we're focusing when people are serving persons experiencing homelessness, knowing that many still have smartphones that can get this, you know, the information for the QR code. But, you know, if they don't, at least they can come out, come away with these tips, use clean needles, uh, use your own pipe, um, and then feel protected by the Good Samaritan law. I think that's really important as well. Uh, all of them are important, but that one's important because uh, we, we often hear stories about how you can help somebody, um, how somebody was uh, using meth with somebody else, somebody else, one of them overdosed, the other one was afraid to help that person because they were concerned about law enforcement and, you know, the, and then subsequently the person passed away. So we want to make sure that, you know, people will feel protected if they are just using, you know, with the person who, who may have been overdosed. So again, let me know if this, you know, of interest um, and possibly we can help distribute some of these postcards if you can, you know, will help in any of your prevention efforts. Next, we are launching uh, the prevention message. This is speaks specifically to the community. It'll be very targeted in terms of you know, how they're reaching uh, the community. This one focuses on MSM or men who have sex with men. Um, again, it focuses on um, some of the symptoms that are not necessarily quite visible um, to the, the naked eye. So I'll play that. And this campaign just launched this week, this portion of the campaign. We're actually right in smack dab in the midpoint. So let me. He hasn't noticed it yet, but meth began wrecking his body the moment he took his first hit. He thinks everything's fine, but meth is cutting off oxygen to his skin. Decay has begun. Neurons are dying. His ability to think clearly and control body movement is permanently damaged. Long before you see the effects, meth's destruction has begun. There is hope and help at methfreelacounty.org. Okay, I hope you're able to hear that one. Um, he has a no So here are some supplementary um, creative um, meth the sorts of brain after a first hit. Um, there's, again, our, our character um, from the last image, meth's unseen damage, expectation reality, you know, somebody using, you know, you do have, you do experience the natural highs, but in reality, um, you know, it's so hard to, reach that euphoria that you once uh, received when you started using because uh, it you know it permanently affects the brain chemistry and then meth dims your shine at work that's another type of creative that we are focusing on, on certain people um, who are you know maybe working late shifts multiple jobs um, it, it affects your coordination affects your thinking so these are just some prevention messages that we'll have on social media and digital so that's it. Um, we don't, again, we don't have all the valuation numbers yet because we're still in the middle of 2021. Um, and uh, so my email's below if you have any additional questions. Hopefully we have a little bit of time for discussion. Um, and with that, I'll close with the opposite of addiction. It's not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is, is connection. So let me stop sharing screen and see. I hope that I was able to provide some new information. I know some of it, you've, uh, some of the folks have seen before. So I appreciate, you know, for you guys uh, staying on board for the entire presentation. Thank you, Angel. Everybody, please don't go yet. Let's have a community discussion. We got a lot of wonderful information today. Very research-based, especially what's happening in LA and in our communities and a lot of different messages. So I want to hear from everybody, please share your thoughts on what you think about Rangel's uh, presentation or any question. I know there was a question, what's a bush tail or a bus tail? Do you happen to know? Oh, bus tail, yeah. Those are just the ads that are behind a bus. So that's, that's what's known as a bus tail. Um, but you know what, you know, let's be an open forum too. Like, thank you, Richard, for inviting questions. Like, even if there's a critique, we can take it back. And I don't, you know, I didn't, you know, some of I contributed to, but I didn't specifically make them. And I'll be honest, some I like better than others. <laughs> so if you, you know, please be open, let's, let's have an open uh, forum. I, you know, I, it was a lot of hard work. I don't want to, you know, discourage anybody, but, you know, I think this is all to be positive and make sure that we are working to, um, you know, improve our creative. Yeah. I have a question. 
Richard? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure, Caroline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, um, it's it's more of what's the bottom line? I mean, meth is meth. Um, meth is not a substance of initiation. I mean, meth is not a substance of initiation. I heard you say about targeted messaging, targeted population. And the way I see the statistics, they're much older. Okay, so, I mean, would you say that uh, there is an emerging framework on how we look at meth? And one of it is meth is not a substance of initiation, unlike alcohol, tobacco. I see, you're saying it's not like, I hate to use the word, but like the gateway. So. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're not into gateway anymore, <laughs> but more of substance of initiation. Yeah. I mean, I feel, you know, I invite others to speak on this, but yeah, those are the, you know, the substances you use more like when you're teens, this, you, the age of initiation, I think is around 24. So it is a little bit of an older group. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's important to know. So that's why we do try to focus on, you know, the older populations, um, but it's important to kind of increase awareness to the group. But again, like we said, we, we target that group. Um, I hope that kind of responses. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm so impressed with, with the campaign, Rangel. I'm, I'm really so impressed. And so can you discuss more about what, how do you, how do you manage targeted messaging? Especially for we, we rely heavily and we, we have a different vendor for the second time. We rely heavily on our media vendor, which is Rescue. Um, and what they do is, a lot of it is computer analytics, especially for the digital social media. So if certain groups have certain um, practices. Um, you know, again, I'm just going to use like a kind of a generic um, example. Um, you know, like if people are skateboarders or into skating and they happen to use a certain substance, I think that's kind of what we use with, you know, or even there's even geo targeting. Like I remember with our Mary Marijuana campaign, um, you know, you're able to target messaging that pop on your phones if you're close to a mall or a library. It's kind of scary, but um, that's. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way we use targeting. Um, again, we mentioned the targeted zip codes. Again, where there's high ED visits, there's high amount of hospitalizations, there's high amount of um, you know deaths in a certain zip code. So we we definitely focus on those areas as much as possible because you know our resources are limited. You know, it sounds like a lot of money, but you know, LA County it's expensive. And on top of it, you know, we're in LA, and our media is more expensive than let's say somewhere you know, and that's more rural. Um, so there's a lot of challenges that we have we encounter. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, Carolina. Thank you for the questions. Hi, hey, thank you for the wonderful presentation. And I love how you presented the videos, uh, especially us, you know, as professionals, not just go based on, you know, what the, um, what others show that because they have um, uh, some images on their faces or, you know, bath TV, but that's the reason why, you know, they're meth consumers. No, there's more than that. Maybe it's like a regular person with any any kind of skin problems, you know. And as you know, as professionals, what we look first at is their their appearance, you know. And we shouldn't go based on their appearance because some of them they're like normal people without any problems, and they must be the ones that need the most help. So I think I think that that's those are great videos. For us for yeah. Thank you, Gracie. Yeah, thank you for that. I mean, often, I mean, this is people who participate in the focus groups, you, you just wouldn't even know too, because some of them, you know, they admit during the time that they do use um, meth and you did not have, you would have no idea. There's just like, you know, mothers, your neighbor, you know, you, you just don't have any idea. So it's important for us to destigmatize um, when we do our messaging. So thank you. I'm um, just typing to the folks on the chat. Thank you all. Rangel, there is a comment in the chat. I'm not sure if you see it. Um, some, uh, Miriam says that um, it might be a great idea if the videos could be shared with high schools, colleges, universities at a county level. We try to um, share, um, we, we try to promote the videos, but they're very targeted because again, ad space is expensive, uh, but we do push them in, in, other, in different ways. But that is, I am kind of curious, you know, like how many people actually see them. Um, again, you know, to Carolina's point earlier, uh, we aren't, that's not the focus group. 
I'll say that younger population, uh, we're working on an alcohol campaign that will be. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of in the works. But yeah, we do try to push it in, in different ways. Right now we're working on recovery month. Some of the folks are here and we're trying to push those videos at those recovery month events. But um, yeah, no, definitely. If there's ways, we would continue to try to push some of the videos in creative. But yeah, thank you for adding that. Any more questions or comments, Any, uh, everyone? Yeah, thank you everyone on the chat for the, the positive comments. Sorry, I, I'm difficult. I have challenges at multitasking, but just thank you for those positive comments. Well, Rangel, before you go, um, I would like to say that I was one of those when I first started this work, the whole faces of meth, you know, mm -hmm. demonizing people and like, um, I think the new campaign, Met Free LA, there really shows the alternative one, but there's a way back from it. But also, it shows that, you know, people that use this, uh, use meth or get, you know, into it are just like anybody else, you know. That's why we really have to be more attentive and paying attention and also getting the information out. And I think that's the biggest thing is that the information is very positive. The messaging is worthwhile to tell other people or to provide to people in the community. So... No, thank you, Richard. And, and then... Um, let me just share something really quick. Does everybody see that? All right. Yeah. So let's give Angel a big hand of applause for what he did. Thank you so much, Angel, you. for your presentation. And then also, we will have our next Hot Topic Tuesday, September 21, dealing with sexual awareness. And it's going to be provided by ADAPS Health Intervention Program. But I think this is what everybody's been waiting for. There it is. Rangel's information. You want to contact him. That is his email and his number in the office, I think. And... I just want to say again that um, he works for SAPSI. He's a prevention service hurt program analyst under prevention services. So it's awesome, you know, all the information and data that you showed in a presentation, first and foremost. And we have on the screen right now all the other staff in ADAP that does Hot Topic Tuesday every time. And um, we don't have enough time for that. So I just want to take this opportunity to wrap it up unless you have any more questions or comments. All right, one more round of applause. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Great channel. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Yeah, now we put a face into the emails. <laughs> Thank you so much.